আসসালামু আলাইকুম ওয়েলকাম টু অল টুডেস আইপিডিআই ভার্চুয়াল ক্লাস টুডেস টক উইল বি গিভেন বাই আওয়ার রেসপেক্টেড ডাইরেক্টর ন্যাশনাল ইনস্টিটিউট অফ কার্ডিওস্কার ডিজিজ আওয়ার ফেভারিট টিচার অ্যান্ড সেক্রেটারি জেনারেল অফ বাংলাদেশ সোসাইটি অফ কার্ডিওস্কার ইন্টারভেনশন আই ওয়েলকাম প্রফেসর মির্জামল স্যার now i i welcome our course director ipda course director my teacher professor abdullah abdul wadu chudri sir please say something about this class and about the course sir sir shobaike shobaike ramzan mubarak ashole ei class er jonno amra shobai beshe achi karon amader porikkhar jonne st limited e amai shei ect te bolo क्लियर उदाउट धन्यवाद चौधरी today we shall have to recapitulate i do not want to tell that i shall have to teach you i shall have to recapitulate you as because these uh, all things are written in your books in your guidelines even then we uh, ask when we ask in the examination hall sometimes you may not remember sometimes you may not recognize sometimes you may not understand which one should be asked and that is why this space is examination oriented you will get it in books but which one is important for exam that i shall have to tell in this stemi management sir start... skin skin share ta dekha jacche na sir ha skin share dekha jacche na na sir ekta sir चाप दें सर 
নিচের ওনার যে স্লাইড থাকে না কম্পিউটার হ্যাঁ স্লাইড শেয়ারে যাবেন স্যার একদম কোনাই স্যার তাতে আসে না स्ट्रेटेजीज you are going to be cardiologist yeah for younger colleagues those who are students for them as because you are going to be cardiologist you have to know the management of st ami as because it is a common disease in cardiovascular system and you will have to manage it in your uh, center it may be in your rosella sub center it may be in your uh, government hospital it may be in your national institute of cardiovascular diseases and whenever we Uh, we shall have to know about the universal definition of myocardial infarction all of you have to know it even then sometimes we even ask in the statistics and or decrease of a cardiac biomarker preferably high sensitivity cardiac component with at least one value above 99% of the upper reference limit and at least one of the following like symptoms of ischemia or may have new or presume new significant change or development of pathological qf or imaging evidence of new or presume new loss of viable myocardium or intracoronary thrombus अनएलेबल <laughs> related to percutaneous coronary intervention type 4b myocardial infarction related to stent thrombosis and type 5 myocardial infarction related to coronary artery bypass grafting and you all of know this is not included in my topic group that you know the how uh, uh, thrombosis for there is uh, black and black Classical ECG changes, rising tension, and ST segment elevation, followed by TUF inversion and QFs. These are the classical changes of ECG in uh, ST elevation myocardial infarction. And you you see uh, this is the ECG evolution in non-reported myocardial infarction. Upper one the noise. Hello, hello. And the 
information and the photo on the arts today's loss of r wave or q wave formation and days t wave inversion and finally uh, days to weeks or months t wave normalization and uh, persisting q wave and management goal as because we shall have to talk about management so we shall have to know the what is the goal of the management the goal for the management of patients with suspected stemi include control of cardiac discomfort rapid identification of the patients who are candidates for urgent perfusion therapy either primary pci or fibrinolysis and trials of lower risk patient to the appropriate location in the hospital avoidance of inappropriate discharge of patients with stemi and initial emergency room management this is very often usually asked that you are placed in the uh, sub center or you are placed in the hospital health complex uh, what you will do and in not only there even in national institute if you have a patient comes to the emergency department you will have to do something immediate that is aspirin usually i'm uh, usually you give 300 mg all of you are know it and 300 mg copidogrel uh, uh, <laughs> and you will do a primary pci then you can give prasugrel or ticagrel or provided the clopidogrel is not available uh, uh, if these are available then clopidogrel should not be given and matrix for uh, painkiller and morphine for painkiller relief of pain chest pain and supplemental oxygen if the oxygen saturation is less than 90% and these are the basic most basic things whenever a patient comes to you in a hospital or in a sub center everywhere you can give it and this is very often asked and this is a very good model you know esc guideline approximate uh, uh, 2017 esc guideline this is also we asked in the different uh, examination that a patient has come how we will have to manage and you will have to manage um, uh, by 10 minutes you should have to uh, do an ecg and diagnose the uh, confirm the diagnosis this is the time 10 minutes and if there is Uh, no facility for um, primary pci you should have to do the fibrinolysis or reperfusion that is by 10 minutes and if there is a facility for reperfusion by less than 120 minute then primary pci strategy and where it will be sent there it should be done by 90 minutes and if it is placed um, if the patient comes to a primary pci center then you will have to do the primary pci less than 60 minute wire crossing time this is very often asked so you will have to uh, re remember it and the perfusion strategy all of you know thrombolysis thrombolysis plus primary pci and pri primary pci and uh, you know myocardial reperfusion strategies there are some limitations and um, uh, of uh, primary pci it is not available in all centers and uh, fibrinolysis can be done in all centers these are the some limitations besides this in primary pci uh, the party or uh, sometimes patient party does not agree that is also a um, uh, limitation and you also know this is also very open asked in the viva board what are the limitations of fibrinolysis greatest benefit in first 3 to 4 hours and satisfactory reperfusion in only 50 to 60% with thrombolytics do now a destinative place in our hand that is uh, approximately 70 to 80% reperfusion occurs but in primary pci approximately 93 to 96% reperfusion occurs early recurrence of ischemia with thrombolytics thrombolytics may be contraindicated sometimes no data for efficacy of thrombolytics in cardiogenic shock and pci is not the analysis we know and here it is said that if you love someone you should have to know this hospital in your country has 24 hours angioplasty in 7 days uh, you should have to and primary pci started pci pci started in acute myocardial infarction in 1979 and beneficial effect of angioplasty over fibrinolysis was published in 1986 by o'neil etel 
and primary PCI here, you should have to know all of you know that time is myocardial. And primary PCI defined as percutaneous catheter intervention in the setting of SPA. This is primary PCI. It has replaced fibrinolysis in patient STMI, provided it can be performed in a timely manner in high volume PCI centers with experienced operators and 24 hours, seven days a week, catheterization laboratory should be open. And here there are some changes. This is also asked in the examination, but the changes in 2012 to 2017. We know some uh, important four things. A important four things you should have to tell that is radial access has become the class previous three. It was class two A indication. Bare metal stent or drag eluting stent over bare metal stent becomes class one indication and completely was class three indication, but it is now class two uh, B indication uh, and. Um, uh, thrombus aspiration, it was class 2A indication, now it has become class 3 indication. Class 3 indication, the routine thrombus aspiration, and sometimes necessary. And other things are very uh, not very important. These three, four things should be necessary. You should have to know these are the changes. <coughs> and here some new things has come that is also now old, Minoka. <coughs> um, we shall have it. And time delays. Clear definition of first medical contact. First medical contact a key. Definition of zero time key. Selection of uh, PCA over fibrinolysis. Uh, maximum delay time, uh, then road to balloon time has been omitted in this guideline. These are, uh, this will be uh, discussed in the later, uh, later on. And time limits, uh, we should have to know 0 to 12 hours primary PCI class 1 indication, 12 to 48 hours class 2A indication, and you should know more than 48 hours class 3 indication means contraindicated. And repercussion therapy definitions of terms to repercussion and first medical contact. First medical contact was the Jano, the Etukun Bulli Habe, the Avonekta Luther Kasi patient, I should say, she may be doctor with the Varish, an arts with the Varish, a technologist with the Varish, they act a ECG put the Varish above, ECG interpret put the Varish, ECG put the Varish among the Var intervention. Jamon defibrillation for the body. Erecom Luther Cassidy patient of post patient camera volvo, first medical contact. And STMI diagnosis, whenever the ECG read is done. That is the first zero time. And primary PCA, margin PCA with balloon stand or other approved devices performed on infarcted artery without previous fibrinol lighting. Uh, primary PCI, yes, margin PCI, uh, you should have asked what is risk PCI, what is pharmacoinvasive PCI, every kind of routinely dhara hoi kori thai. Rescue PCI means emergent PCI performed as soon as possible in case of failed fibrinol lighting treatment. Amra is easy for a fibrinolytic therapy. The age of the Kunosa, the KJ, uh, failed to set a shetak as the Amra PCI Guri, Shekatra with rescue PCI and routine early strategy after fibrinolysis at our low. Amada Shokol question to take three and fibrinolysis for our duty to get to the PCI Gorbo, Shetak or routine early PCI. Now there is a failed thrombolysis solo among PCI column, among routine early PCI column, a duta to medium Razeta Bully, Shetak of the pharmacoinvasive strategy. The pharmacoinvasive strategy key holo, fibrinolysis combined with rescue PCI, hemolysis or routine to take a million pharmacoinvasive. As I am a Bangla, a golden elam, or a bracket. Here you have seen the early phase TMI with three hours, and on the right panel, uh, three hours, 12 hours, 48 hours, 48 hours, and more than 48 hours. 
ইসকেমিয়া <laughs> of less than 12 hours duration and persistent ST segment elevation. A primary PCA strategy is recommended over fibrinolysis within indicated time frames class 1. If primary PCA cannot be performed timely after STMI, STMI, then you will have to do fibrinolysis that is also class 1 indication. Here there is something important which is a bit higher asked questions. In the absence of ST segment elevation, primary PCA strategy is not going to be done. What is it? What is it? What is it? Hemodynamic instability of or cardiogenic shock, recurrent or ongoing chest pain, refractory to medical treatment, life-threatening arrhythmias or cardiac arrest, mechanical complications of myocardial infarction, acute heart failure, recurrent dynamic ST segment or TUF changes, particularly intermittent ST segment elevation. Either on a ketro, amra primary PCI strategy. Again, a sentence type to change as a primary PCI strategy. Primary PCI strategy can be done. That is also class one indication. And here, uh, what we have shown in the picture previously, that is uh, summarized here. Maximum time from first 10 minutes and uh, maximum time for PCI less than 120 minutes and maximum time of ST, uh, MI diagnosis to wire processing less than 60 minutes and maximum time from STMI diagnosis to wire processing in a transport center. So the Onnokono center transport for a total 120 minutes or center for 90 minutes in the and maximum time from STMI diagnosis to bolus or infusion start of less than 10 minutes and time delay from the start of fibrinolysis to uh, evaluation of its efficacy 60 to 90 minutes. When we start the fibrinolytic start, we will see the ECG in the first minute of the ECG and we will see that the fibrinolysis is going to be perfect. Uh, satisfactory fibrinolysis is not going to be able to do it. If satisfactory fibrinolysis is not going to be able to do it, we will rescue the patient. The time delay from the start to fibrinolysis to angiography is 2 to 24 hours. The guideline is 12 guideline is 3 to 24 hours. The guideline is 2 to 24 hours. Primary purpose for intervention and adjunctive therapy. Again, our example primary PCI infarcturated artery class one indication and new coronary angiography with PCI, if indicated, is recommended in patients with symptoms or signs of recurrent or remaining ischemia after primary PCI. And infarcturated artery technique stenting should be uh, stenting should be done. It is class one indicated. Axoma silos from must load to patient akle. Shekhetre amra the chole ashi haparin diye rakhi. Tarpor hoy to amra second setting niye je angioplastic stent koshe. In fact, shetake amade sharash the class one indication niye arse. The stenting is recommended over below angioplastic. Ar amra to eragi dekhi arsi the radiolutin stent is recommended over bare metal stent class 1 and radial access is class 1. Ito amra agi de kiarsi. Procedural and post-procedural antithrombotic therapy in patients undergoing primary percutaneous coronary intervention. This is very, very important. The coronary operator primary is a core ashlam. Baba Diyaniya chole ashlam kintu ta very procedural ba post-procedural antithrombotic ki hove sheta shabbar ke exact knowledge thaklona. Our strength is not going to be able to do it. 
সুতরাং পেরি প্রসিডিউরাল এন্ড পোস্ট প্রসিডিউরাল অ্যান্টি থ্রম্বোটিক থেরাপি সম্পর্কে আমাদের জানতে হবে অ্যান্টি প্লেটলেট থেরাপি সোজা সুজি কথা যদি আমার پیشنট প্রাইমারি পিসিআই করি তাহলে আমরা চেষ্টা করব তাকে অ্যাসপ্রিন সাথে টিকাট্রিলর অর প্রাসুগ্রেল প্রভাইডেড দিস আর अवेलेबल যদি अवेलेबल না থাকে তখন ইনটা বল আমরা ক্লোবিটি করতে যাব এটা আর ডোজ সম্পর্কে তো আমরা জানি যে 300 মিলি গ্রাম অ্যাসপ্রিন and uh, 180 mg ticagrel or 60 mg prasugrel othoba aplobutigrel gele kono kono amra 300 use kori kono kono authority 600 mg for this and antiplatelet therapy gp2 b3 inhibitor these are uh, now class 2 a indication and anticoagulant therapy and uh, we know routinely heparin should be done uh, during the procedure this class 1 indication routine use of unfractionated heparin and um, in patients with heparin induced thrombocytopenia very very rare shei khetre amra bivalvulin dilutes korte pari acha ar ekhane oi eki kotha bola hoyeche sugral amastic 600 mg strategy এটা আমরা বাই দিস টাইম অলরেডি জেনে গেছি যে ওয়ান ফাইব্রোলাইসিস ইজ দা রিপারফিউশন স্ট্র্যাটেজি ইট ইজ রিকমেন্ডেড টু ইনিশিয়েট দিস ট্রিটমেন্ট অ্যাজ সুন অ্যাজ পসিবল আফটার দা প্রি হসপিটাল সেটিং দ্যাট ইজ ক্লাস 1 ইন্ডিকেশন এ ফাইব্রিন স্পেসিফিক এজেন্ট লাইক টেনেক্টোপ্লাস এন্ড এলটিপ্লাস ইজ রিকমেন্ডেড দ্যাট ইজ অলসো ক্লাস 1 ইন্ডিকেশন এন্ড হুইচ ইজ অলসো अवेलेबल নাও ইন आवर কান্ট্রি অ্যান্টিপ্লেটলেট কো থেরাপি এখানে আমাদের ওরাল অ্যাসপ্রিন আমাদের কন্টিনিউ করতেই হবে এবং যদি প্রাইমারি পিসিএ করি সেই ক্ষেত্রে আমরা কন্টিনিউ করব তার ডুয়াল অ্যান্টিপ্লেটলেট থেরাপি উইথ টিকাট্রিলর অর প্রাসুগ্রেল এন্ড যদি প্রাইমারি পিসিএ না হয় তাহলে উই ক্যান ইউজ ক্লোটিপিন অ্যান্টিকোয়াগুলেশন কো থেরাপি উইথ ফাইব্রোনোলাইসিস ফাইব্রোনোলাইসিস যদি আমরা করি স্ট্রেপটোকাইনাস দিয়ে ফাইব্রোনোলাইসিস করলে ফার্স্ট 24 আওয়ার্স এ আমাদের অ্যান্টিকোয়াগুলেন্ট আর দরকার নেই আর যদি আমরা টেনেক্টি প্লেস দিয়ে করি তাহলে তা আমাদের 8 থেকে আপ টু 8 ডেজ আমাদের হসপিটাল স্টেজ অফ দ্য ফর কোর্ট ততদিন আমরা হেপারিন দেব এটা ইট মে বি অ্যানক্সাপারিন অর ইট মে বি আনফ্রাকশনেটেড হেপারিন Interventions following fibrinolysis, emergency angiography and PCI, if indicated, is recommended in patients with heart failure or shock. Rescue PCI is indicated accordingly. We know that if fibrinolysis is done, if fibrinolysis is done, then we can assume that when fibrinolysis has failed, meaning that less than 50% ST segment resolution at 60 to 90 minutes or any time. in the presence of hemodynamic or electrical instability or worsening ischemia ekane ekta proshno kora hoy porikkhar hole je effective fibrinolysis hoyse eta bujhba kibhabe eta bujhar koto guli upay ache eta ek number holo clinical je sir patient er chest pain kome ashbe hemodynamically stable hobe patient er condition improve korbe tarpor ecg ta holo important this is the other less than 50% rest segment resolution of a rect important issue ache seta holo accelerated ed1 tubular rhythm seta paoa jete pare tomar ie hisabe fibrinolysis er marker hisabe then angiography and pci if the infarctal artery if indicated is recommended between 2 to 24 that is um, uh, um, uh, pharmaco invasive we have told it earlier thrombolytic therapy we are using now it is from streptokinase and tenetoclax in our cut and these are the doses we do not require kokhoni porikkhar hole dose usually jiggesha kora hoy na except bolus dose guli contra indication to thrombolysis ei proshno ta kintu jodio khub mone korba je ekdom halka jinish eta to sir md for the md final porikkha proshno korlo ba ब्लिडिंग non bleeding disorder aortic dissection absolute and transient with uh, relatively with the assay transient ischemic attack oral anticoagulant therapy pregnancy 
refractory hypertension and trans liver disease in mectoid myocardial that is active peptic ulcer is are the absolute and related contraindication eta kintu khubi choto jinish ebong very early jinish but porikha kintu ei prashno ta kora hoy drug therapy in stmi angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor should be given थेरापी इज इंडिकेटेड एज सून एज हेमोडाइनिकल स्टेबल फॉर ऑल पेशेंट विथ एविडेंस ऑफ लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकुलर रिजेक्शन फ्रैक्शन इक्वल टू और लेस देन 40 परसेंट एंड और हार्ट फेलियर टू रिड्यूस द रिस्क ऑफ हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन एंड डेथ एस वेल एस इट प्रिवेंट्स द वेंट्रिकुलर रिमॉडलिंग इट इज क्लास वन इंडिकेशन शुत्रा� Tensiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. <coughs> if or if not tolerated, tokenicable angiotensin receptor blockers is above. The later umbras of the left ventricular ejection fraction less than 40 percent. That is the heart failure. That is the left ventricular to be used for. That's how umbra angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. Acute anterior myocardial infarction in patient can routinely use for a ventricular remodeling prevent corrosion. Beta blocker, it is also class 1 indication uh, recommended in patients with LVEF less than 40%. Aki bhabe ase, shudrang monera kharjun ma shubhida ase, and or heart failure after stabilization. And, uh, and MRA is recommended in patients with heart failure. Heart failure is a bit thakke, tarkhe te minar no corticoid receptor antagonist uh, and LVEF less than 40%. Thakho, English shabhi aki rokam, shudrang to maadhe monera kharjun ma no posture kisu nai, the monorakhar shubhidas and loop diuretics recommended in patients with acute heart failure in symptoms or signs of fluid overload to improve symptoms. This is also, these all four are the class one indication. Taila amra class one indication rack therapy following STMI, angiotensin converting and then inhibitor, beta blocker, mineral corticoid receptor antagonist and if necessary, loop diuretics. Nitrate. Nitrates is recommended in patients with symptomatic heart failure with systolic blood pressure uh, more than 90, uh, 90 millimeter of mercury to improve symptoms and reduce congestion. And oxygen more or less than 90% of the high. Oxygen saturation is less than 90%. Agatha is 95%. Acon oxygen indicated level is less than 90% really. And in case in patients with pulmonary edema, pulmonary edema is the thake, then let's shake it the systolic arterial pressure, systolic arterial oxygen saturation to move the 90 hoi, then low amra 95 maintain for our chest up. Our patient intubation is sometimes necessary if the respiratory failure or exhaustion leading to hypoxemia, hypercapnia or acidosis. All these are the class one indication. And these are class two A indication, non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, and then intravenous nitrates, opiates, regularly are probably treatment of STMI with complications. Uh, you cannot get always uh, only STMI, you may have some complication. You will have to manage that. Management of left ventricular failure and acute heart failure, uh, management of left ventricular dysfunction and acute heart failure with ST elevation myocardial infarction. ST elevation myocardial infarction, particularly anterior, the more massive infarction, the ventricular failure, the nitrate is used to be blood pressure 92, the oxygen is used to be less than 90. Um, uh, saturation high among patient and intubation of sometimes necessary with one in gist shorted with the umbra it in the genetic the heart failure thakle umbra blood pressure permit kule umbra 90 rupore thakle umbra nitrate IV nitrate di the barbo now le umbra oxygen saturation less than 90 ule thakke more than 95 percent for our chest akurbo our intubation sometimes may be necessary and management of cardiogenic shock if the cardiogenic shock, the ST uh, myocardial elevation, myocardial infarction management is practically accordingly, according to the um, uh, condition. Fibrinolysis should be considered. So they had a class two indication to go fibrinolysis amra korte pari and complete revascularization amra korar chesta korte pari tau class two indication, uh, complete revascularization, akhona class one indication in life. And intraortic balloon pumping sometimes necessary, maybe class two indication. 
ম্যানেজমেন্ট অফ অ্যাট্রিয়াল ফিবুলেশন যদি অ্যাট্রিয়াল ফিবুলেশন থাকে তাহলে আমরা হার্ট ফেলিওর দেখলাম তারপরে লাগতে পারে কখন লাগানো হয় আইসিডির ইন্ডিকেশন যেখানে আছে সেখানে আবার বিস্তারিত বলা আছে সেখান থেকে আমরা আইসিডির ইন্ডিকেশন পার্টিকুলারলি আমাদের প্রফেসর ওয়াদুদের খুব ফেভারেট কোয়েশ্চেন এবং প্রফেসর ওয়াদুদ আইসিডি পেশ করে তাহলে তোমরা আইসিডির ইন্ডিকেশনটা খুব সুন্দর করে জেনে যাইবা সব ইন্ডিকেশনগুলি এখানে শুধু একটা আমরা বলছি আইসিডি থেরাপি ইজ রিকমেন্ডেড টু রিডিউস সাডেন কার্ডিয়াক ডেথ ইন پیشنট সিমটোম্যাটিক হার্ট ফেলিওর এন্ড এলবিএফ লেস দ্যান 35% ডেসপাইট অপটিমাল থেরাপি ফর মোর দ্যান যদি and now it is treatment is going on the prognosis of those who survive to this hospital is much better with a 28 day survival is more than 85% and early death is usually due to arrhythmia particularly ventricular arrhythmia and prognosis is worse with anterior than inferior infarcts with old of those who survive an acute death uh, 80% of the year for 5 year and 50% for ডিসেন্ডিং করি and after pci and this is pci is in progress this is the right panel this is the after pci to the led and this is another patient uh, also suffering from acute st elevation myocardial infarction anterior rca is done uh, you see that some uh, there are th- some thrombus and some lesion in the mid rca we should not have to think about it but this is led and 100% concluded and we shall have to treat it and accordingly we have treated uh, the led angioplasty is uh, in progress and on the right panel this is the final result after the angioplasty this is the final result after the primary angioplasty and this is another uh, case for acute inferior myocardial infarction and you see uh, there is 100% occlusion of the right coronary artery and you will have to see the left system the left system is quite a bit good and so uh, we have done pci to rca
uh, everything as because during exam these are the uh, questions you will have to face uh, sometimes uh, what is the myocardial infarction definition amra tokhoni dorte jai jokhon ecg te tumra bes golmal kore felo tokhon accha thik ache tumi mi definition ta bol eta kintu ekta practical kotha tokhon jodi tumi shetao na paro tale kintu tomake tokhon underestimate kora hoy je তুমি কিছু করে আসার বা কিছু বুঝতে পারো না আর এস টি এলিভেশন মার্কেটাইল ইনফ্রাকশনের ডেফিনেশন জান বানা এটা তো হয় না তারপরে প্যাথোফিজিওলজি তো তোমরা এমনিও পড়ছো অন্য লেকচার হয়েছে এখানে ম্যানেজমেন্টের ভিতরে আমাদের প্রাইমারি পিসি কোন কোন ক্ষেত্রে করি ফিব্রোলাইসিস কোন ক্ষেত্রে করি বা ফার্মাকোইন বেসিক পিসি এটা কি তারপরে কোনটা কোন টাইমের ভিতর করা হয় আর টাইম ফ্যাশনটা কি 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 ড্রাগ আমাদের সাথে দেওয়া হয় কমপ্লিকেশন থাকলে কি কি ড্রাগ দেওয়া হয় এই আমার মনে হয় মোটামুটি ম্যানেজমেন্টের ভিতরে এবং সাবসেক্টরে থাকলে কিভাবে করবা এবং আমার এনআইসিডি তে থাকলে কিভাবে করবা বা মেডিকেল কলেজে থাকলে কিভাবে করবা এই কতগুলো क्वेश्चन ভেরি অফেন আমি মনে করি আশা করা হয় অনলাইন এক্সামিনার তো তারা তাদের মত করে বলে আমি আমাদের মত করে বল আমার মত করে বললাম আশা করি তোমরা যারা স্টুডেন্টস তাদের জন্য বলছি আশা করি বুঝতে পেরেছো যে কি আমরা চাই थैंक यू thank you sir sir uh, please screen share shahjahan thank you sir your excellent elaborate presentation we welcome our sir. one of the faculty from the malaysia mohammad shahjahan kobir your fellows here mr jama sir your fellow mohammad shahjahan kobir assalamu alaikum sir of malaysia also present here they learn a lot from your lecture sir shahjahan kobir my student and yeah 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 he also, also present from malaysia with lots of malaysian students here so uh, here we so show uh, here you see our teacher professor abdullal shafi mundar sir h l luthur rahman sir khalid mohsin sir shakil gofur uh, lots of faculties here before you before i start from the panelist i just ask question from the students i uh, i just unmute one one from student of malaysia uh, i don't hear him is the cit cw cyt who is he sir please sir, sir please uh, remove his skin sir apna skin to shade sir ji sir skin shade to shade to hobe to ji sir ji sir hello acha Hello, do you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Please, please uh, tell your name. Okay, my name is Chu Ying Tong. I'm a fourth-year uh, medical student from Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. So I have, I have a question. Like, um, why we can't do thrombolysis or primary PCI in the non-STEMI or unstable in China? This is my question. Please uh, repeat again. Uh, why we can't do like uh, thrombolysis or primary PCI? in the non stemi and also unstable angina yeah yeah sir shunchan mirza mal sir one question from the malaysian student yeah. she asked she asked why not give thrombolysis in non stmi or unstable angina ah yes very good uh, very good to remove the skin shear sir uh, very good and best question my sir. dear okay okay uh, thank you sir to move the pathogen uh, I, I will be asking everybody to uh, speak in English so that the participants can actually participate better. Uh, uh, the answer of it: Why we do not give thrombolysis in non-STMI or unstable angina? In case of uh, why we give in STMI, we shall have to know the pathogenesis of uh, uh, myocardial infarction, ST elevation myocardial infarction, the thrombosis fibrin rich. and fibrin this thrombus so we have to give fibrinolytic and uh, in case of um, uh, in case of um, unstable angina and non st elevation myocardial infarction that is not fibrin this so you will not be able to uh, overcome this um, problem as well as rather than whenever it will be necessary during uh, st elevation myocardial infarction of this patient you will not be able to do That is platelet and splenic. So I think Professor Wadud can add something. And the thing is that the start of the stroke, the thrombus, the heart problems. Not only theory, but in practice also we have seen 
that step to uh, thrombolysis is better for only a still not because of the increased mortality is not sir गाइडेड so this criteria we can follow for pci in non stmi thank you next question dr bhavani logan hi thank you doctor doctor yeah uh doctor i have two questions to ask uh, the first question is in case of reinfarction meaning patient uh, gets mi that occur within 28 days do we still do biomarkers like troponin since troponin will remain elevated up to like 10 to 14 days sometimes longer so is there any need to do a uh, biomarker uh, test for patient that comes to us with reinfarction that's my first question and my second question is um like occasionally patient mi patient with mild to moderate ckd normally uh, there will be benefit with ac inhibitor beta blocker um i think aspirin and statin but patient who is on dialysis they know uh, they they normally wouldn't be given statin so can i know why is that so like why, why don't we why why are we not giving statin to dialysis patient but how is it beneficial for mild to moderate ckd patients yes two question if troponin raised up to 14 to 15 days which biomarker is needed to uh, diagnose of the reinfarction which biomarker is used for to diagnose the reinfarction of the mi number one question number one question is ckd on dialysis why not statin is given or the sir the thing is because that topi has long half life for reinfarction ckmp is better right sir ckmp is the if the ckmp mm-hmm. is raised then it's reinfarction in ckd patient the pro point is why are you going to go for thrombolysis or a, to improve the symptom to reduce the mortality to Im- improve the morbidity that means lv function now if we give thrombolysis these patients have been put in complications so these are patients better suited for actually pci in this we state is safer in these cases rather than thrombolysis uh, or the second question if you want to give if you want to give we in practice what we do sometimes we use the half dose hello so second question is so the थ्रोमोलिस डिजीज compelling indication that you can be using statin in that set yes, but for ckd perspective it doesn't give any added benefit uh, now that's right jab so, ckd patient at dr shobar baba critical left main amra angioplasty korlo tokhon tar creatinine 9 10 11 on dialysis take to amar ditei hobe of course that's the compelling indication you have to give it sir mujumdar sir sir 
Do you hear me, uh, sir? Professor yeah, Mojunda, sir? Uh, see, uh, this, this comment on, uh, on CKD and statin. Statin, someone the ball of dialysis at patient came by statin. Sir, she uh, is a foreign, foreign, foreign student, sir. She is a student yeah. of foreign yeah. student. Oh, uh, uh, statins are of no value if we give it to the CKD patients as a or the prevention of the cardiovascular disease. But when the cardiovascular disease is there for the therapeutic purpose, we use the statins. It is okay because statins is not contraindicated due to some other diseases. It is not given that it is not you. It is not useful in the cases of the CKD patients for the prevention of the cardiovascular disease. But in the case of the, as the professor Mir Jamal said, uh, that the it uh, uh, he did a left main disease and you have to give the statins. Yeah, but I, I have I have some two comments. Can I can I give the comments here or? Later. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Mohsen. Okay, you give us a comment. Yeah, yeah, points. Yeah, uh, uh, for me, uh, the, uh, I must uh, thank Professor Mir Jamal. My, my, I must congratulate rather for the for his presentation on the advanced uh, uh, management of the acute myocardial infarction, which is very much necessary. But uh, one should not overlook the clinical part of the management of the acute myocardial infarction. When the patient is in, admitted in the coronary care unit, uh, how to follow up this patient, it is important, I think. The, whether there is a, uh, we have to look for the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, because some of the complications develop about the fourth and fifth day, patient uh, go, go to, goes to the shock uh, due to the mechanical uh, complications. So, and there is also there may be chance of reinfarction. So, the clinical follow-up, clinical assessment during the CCU uh, admission patient is very important. Uh, it, it, it I understand. So, it, it should not be overlooked. And the other thing is that they always think that most of the patient will not get the uh, reperfusion therapy. They will get the and only a few a bigger portion will get the but most of the uh, also very important to talk about that the did not get the uh, reperfusion therapy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. You, Shudir, Dr. Shudir, okay. do you hear yes, me? Sir. Dr. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please ask your question. Uh, yes, sir. I would like to take uh, 15 seconds extra, sir. Uh, because uh, firstly, I would like to thank our course coordinator, Professor Abdul Wadul, sir, Masum, uh, Mohsin Ahmed, sir, and Arif Sadal Bhaiya for taking trouble of arranging such a, such a splendid program. We are really grateful to you all. And I think this is perhaps the best course we have in Southeast Asia, if not in the world. And, uh, and regarding to this class, I would like to uh, say that the class was splendid, and uh, no doubt. And but I have some uh, confusions and and some queries to uh, sir. The first query is sir told uh, that uh, how will you understand that the patient has been adequately thrombolyzed? And he said that there will be remission of the chest pain, ST elevation, uh, ST there will be uh, suppression of the ST segment by more than fifty percent. The patient will be hemodynamically stable and all that. But, uh, but I have gone through books and there I saw that don't rely on chest pain because it might confuse you. Chest pain is not a specific, uh, uh, non specific uh, clinical sign for adequate thrombolysis because uh, when a patient is elderly, usually uh, they might have partial denervation of the heart. And the next thing is, next thing is we most often use opioid analgesics like morphine, pethidine and it can also mask the chest pain. So we are not sure whether this is due to adequate thrombolysis or due to the use of opioid analgesic. That is the first thing. Uh, second is are told about the uh, suppression of the or uh, resolution of the ST segment by more than 50%. But recent books are saying that no, it's not 50%, it's more than 70%. Uh, may, may I? Yes, sir. I have uh, more questions. Sir. Uh, well, let's go one at a time because this is a very vital question. Okay. Uh, we said that 
You assess the patient not only one component, but many components. Relief of symptoms. Opioid analgesic, if the thrombolysis is not uh, proper, is not going to give, give you benefit after two hours or three hours. After thrombolysis, it takes around, you are doing the second decision to assess in the patient after one hour or one and a half hours. Right. Yes. Second, ECG. More, more than 50% resolution, it has worked. More than 70% resolution, most likely there is PME3 proof. Successful thrombolysis, actually 70%, more than 70% resolution of the ST segment elevation means you have most likely achieved more than 2 plus PME2 plus proof. More than 50% resolution, it, it, maybe it's between 2 and something like that. Number three, okay. uh, reperfusion arrhythmias. These are also indications. Number four, yes. rapid rise and fall of biomarkers. That's an indication. Yes. Number five, imaging. If you do an echo, you see the improvement in the return of motion abnormality. That's an indication. Number six, if you do a cap, you see that we have achieved TB3 flow, then you have achieved full thrombolysis. These are the things that actually constitute the signs of successful thrombolysis. Dr. Vadud, may I add a few words? Yeah, sir. Uh, yeah, sir. Dr. Dr. Shudir has uh, emphasized on the importance of chest pain. Actually, we know a lot of patients of acute myocardial infarction are diabetics for a long-standing period, and they have autonomic neuropathy. And in this group of patients, is not always a very uh, important presenting feature. So in this group of patients, they are the chest pain. If you rely on chest pain, we, we are really likely to be confused. And uh, so, I uh, like what Dr. Professor Wadud has said, we have to rely on the other factors uh, regarding the uh, uh, resolution of the ST elevation and other things. We have to consider those into uh, regarding the success of thrombolysis. Thank you. Uh, another, you have another question? Sudhir? Sudhir? Yes, sir. I yeah. Yes, sir. Last question. Uh, Last question. Yeah. Times, many a time, a patients with acute uh, acute MI uh, may not typically present with ST elevation in the ECG. Uh, let's say if it is acute LCX occlusion. Or many a times, we might also get velocity or deep interest T. Then what is the modality? Do we actually proceed to the CAT? Do we activate CAT at that? Uh, what is the clear cut idea about that, sir? What do uh, we do, sir? Mijalpa, will you answer it? Regarding the diagnosis of the acute ST elevation myocardial infarction, only ECC is not the parameter. We have say, we have uh, told in the uh, very first slide that uh, rising or falling of um, uh, tighter of the um, proponent eye, as well as any of the following. Uh, subsequent five pictures and one of them is ECG uh, that ECG uh, changes uh, their ST elevation and their uh, subsequently ST elevation, T wave inversion, T wave appearance. This is one uh, picture. Another, uh, the other pictures, loss of viable myocardium by echocardiography or uh, other uh, three, four pictures are there. So you will have to diagnose uh, ST elevation marker infarction on that criteria, number one. Number two, if the patient is, uh, we have also shown in one slide, whenever there is no ST segment elevation, even then suspected uh, ischemic type of chest pain with some other criteria, we should have to go for uh, primary PCI STRAT-Z. That is, uh, whenever patient is in cardiogenic shock, patient have marker, uh, heart failure, patient have, uh, including the ischemic type of chest pain, patient have cardiogenic shock, patient have a heart failure, patient have um, uh, fissures of uh, that is uh, uh, ventricular septal rupture, well, this type of complication, then we can uh, also uh, arrange the uh, primary PCI strategy. So always you will not uh, depend on, most of the time we depend on ECG, but not always we should have to depend on ECG. May okay. I add something? Yes, sir. May I add something? Yes, sir. Actually, I ask sometimes the questions, they, what are the special situation when despite absence of typical ST second elevation, you should consider a thrombin lysis when the primary PCI is not available? Number one, Posterior MI. 
You have to look for it. Unless you look for it, you don't find it. Number two, That's suspected another. left vein disease. You have to look for it. Number three, LBBB, you do not know whether they nuance it or not. Go for the carbose criteria, whether it's fulfilled or not. Number four, pacing patient. In the pacing patient, if we have previous sequence, now you, the, the patient had typical ischemic chest pain, central, left external, compressive, with dyspnea, with radiation, and lasting more than 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and you see the region of pulmonary motion abnormality is severe, you can consider, you should consider the, whether it is an MI or not. And, and also, sometimes patients. patients. So these are the situation you should go for it. The best is if you can take the patient to the cath lab. But most of the time in this country, and I think also perhaps uh, in many other third world countries, that will not be feasible. So we have to think of fibrinolytic like disease. Thank you, I like Dr. Add, okay. I like to add one thing more. Even uh, in uh, latest uh, 2017 guidelines, they have also included the RBBB. So the, if the patient has uh, significant jetrosternal chest pain, mimicking uh, um, a still elevation marker infarction with RBVB, that we can also treat as like a, a still elevation marker. Sometimes with lip mend is also. Particularly if it is yeah. new onset. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sanjida Ansari, do you hear me? Dr. Sanjida? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Uh, can I add some tweet, Prof. Walu, then? Dr. Shahjan, just wait. Dr. Sanjida, ask a question, then you answer. Dr. Sanjida, answer. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. First of yeah. all, I would like to. Th Sir, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 You ask a question. Sir, first of all, I would like to say thank you for having such a splendid program. This is really a very good initiative. My question to you is, sir, a patient of non-stillivation MI already on low molecular low molecular weight here. So if the patient undergoes routine PCI, so when to stop and when to start after stand. Mijan, who will you answer? Oh, Shadhan, do you want to say something? Shadhan? It, it, it was belonging the, the last questions that what you said, the doctor, on the answering of Dr. Sudhi's question. That is actually, that is the special situation you have seen, you have told the post VMI, LBB, and the, but the, the guideline for the ACS and the PPCI or thrombolysis regarding the um, ST elevation MI is actually to cover up that this guideline is made the thing simple. All the organization, American Cardiac uh, Association, NICE guideline is for to cover up the, uh, massive people, mass people that. Uh, almost I think 70 to 80 percent they will cover the STL if STL vision is there even nice guidelines said no need to go for the marker cardiac marker no need to uh, spend time to waste the thing. nice guideline already directly say if it is clear cut STL vision MI patient symptoms is there you just go for the thrombolysis or PPPCI. Right. So, uh, the question uh, raised by Dr. Shudhi, it is for the, you know, in some point, the specialist cardiologist, cardiac centers as well as the cardiologist is there. There are some, and uh, that's why, that's why uh, uh, the, the cardiologist will take the decision depending upon some expert investigation, other things. But as a whole, to make it generalized, if a still vision is there, chest pain is there, will follow it. We can, we even cannot go for the um, cardiac biomarker. That's it. And yeah. another one, there is in all the guidelines, you see there is a chapter, uh, question, that condition STEMI in special situation. Actually what my uh, beloved professor, Abdullah Shafi Mujumda said, that treat the, see the clinical situation. He always told, told us that this is the clinical situation. We must not treat the ACS. We must not treat the STEMI. We must the, treat the patient. If patient have CKD, we will obviously we cannot has come with the chest pain. The chest pain in another trouble. We cannot 
uh, damage further his kidney status, right? But if he is on dialysis, or if we can manage the dialysis, you know, some guideline also said that if the creatinine is high before the dial before the angio, um, angioplasty or PCI, you go for dialysis. Under the uh, after the angioplasty, you go for dialysis. So that special situation requires special decision, special setup. We must thank not you. jam. Okay, decision. thank you. Uh, Mijam also, please ask, uh, please uh, answer her question. Dr. Shanti Dhar, uh, whenever a patient is suffering from unstable angina, non-stable elevation myocardial infarction, and a patient is uh, on uh, low molecular weight heparin, uh, and that patient developed acute ST elevation myocardial infarction, we don't bother Whenever uh, he or uh, she have uh, ST elevation myocardial infarction, whether he has obtained PBSD, uh, low molecular weight happened or not, we should uh, immediately send the patient to the consider it. But in routine case, 12 hours before, as because its uh, half life is approximately 12 hours, so we put 12 hours to the but for ST elevation myocardial infarction, we do not have any follow uh, rule that we shall have to give uh, low molecular weight heparin uh, uh, before this time. And after the procedure, after the procedure, practically it should not be continued anymore uh, following routine PCI. But for primary PCI, uh, we usually follow the protocol for 48 hours. We give either lower heparin or uh, conventional heparin, unfractionated heparin after shift removal. Two hours after the shift removal, we will give two or three um, doses of conventional heparin, but this is also not indicated. Dr. Rahat? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Rahat? Sound, please. Ask yes, sir. Question. Yeah. Yes. A sound, sir. I have a question regarding if a patient come with a pharmacoinvasive pharmaco strategy, then do we need to give him another loading dose of clopidogrel aspirin? If the patient has fibrin lysis, then if the patient came for the pharmacoinvasive strategy, do we need to give him another dose of fibrin lysis? This is my number one question. Number uh, two question is, uh, in case of inferemi with complete heart block, do you consider to go for a TPM as well as RCA stenting? Thank you, sir. This is my two question. Sir, meet Jamal, sir. I'm Volvo. Please, sir. Uh, regarding pharmacoinvasive uh, strategy, because you have already loaded the patient uh, during acute, acute myocardial, ST lymphoma myocardial infarction and given streptokinase. Uh, then I think the sound is the coach, sir. Sir, what is the second question? Sir, if you are my complete heart block. Complete heart block. Uh, yes, complete, uh, following acute myocardial infarction, complete heart block, uh, you will have to treat both. Uh, if necessary, uh, you will uh, first be better pain. And if it does not recover, then immediately temporary pacemaker to the um, angioplasty and uh, uh, side by side uh, temporary pacemaker is done and angioplasty should be done. Thank you, sir. Dr. Rian? Yes, may I add yes. something? Yes. Yes. Sir, what is sir? Sir, what is sir? Uh, one, thing, one thing is that in inferior mind, the patient is in the case of complete heart, the patient is given an inferior answer. The basic problem is. RC is approved. Now, you give back to me, if it doesn't respond, you have to do the uh, temporary pacemaker. And yes. then you do the primary PCI if possible. And most of the time, in the table, patient will revert to sinus. Yes. Or the patient may revert to sinus within 24 hours at most. Yes. We don't see more than that. Even with, if you cannot do the primary PCI, if do we do the TPM and keep the thrombolysis? Within a usually within 24 to 72 hours, most of the patient will be back to sign up. And if it is not successful, even then, within two weeks, almost all the patients will be back to sign up. Yes, yes. Dr. Rehan, do you hear me? Dr. Rehan? 
Dr. Uh, Noor Hanifa Muhammad Izani, do you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, I'm a medical student, year four medical student from Malaysia. So my question is that how, eh, sorry, should we routinely give beta blockers and nitrates in inferior MI patients? Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Khalik Jawan. Khalik Jawan. Okay. Khalik Bhai. Oh, sorry. Khalid Mohsin Bhai. Khalid Bhai. Khalid Jaman is not in the... Khalid, Khalid Mohsin, sir. Uh, actually, in acute MI setting, uh, whatever drug you use, you try to use the shorter acting form of beta blocker. Actually, the, in our, if you want to use the oral beta blocker, I think metoprolol is the best drug to use the acute part of uh, myocardial infarction. You can start those considering the heart rate and uh, blood pressure of the patient. 12.5 milligram twice a day is a good starting dose and then you start to upstrate the dose. And previously another drug was commonly used but still available in our country is the IV Esmolol. It is a short acting beta blocker intravenous form. And nowadays the oral beta blockers are used. And when you discharge the patient, you try to switch over to the long-acting ones like bisprolol or nevivolol. And this same applies to the nitrates as well. You try to use the, the shorter-acting one like the uh, embryo or captopril, and then you go for the long-acting ones. So if in case it becomes more dynamically unstable, you can stop the drug and the, the effect of the drug wears off very soon and the dynamic instability is not continued for a long time. So the, the principle is use the short-acting preparations. May how, long she, how long she can continue nitrates? How long she continue nitrates for MI? Yeah, actually the nitrate has, doesn't have any role in the secondary prevention uh, in ischemic heart disease. It's only for the symptomatic benefit. So it is better to use nitrate uh, until the we need to evaluate the if the patient has underlying provocable ischemia. In in my yes. practice, I have seen in and in coronary care units, even in yeah. lab also, that patient blood patient in patient with inferior MI after successful thrombolysis. Patient blood pressure stable, heart rate is also uh, 
not that much very and normal but after starting the beta blocker patient yeah. collapse yeah. Uh, may what I say that in, in my practice uh, I have seen so my my thing based on the evidence base I, my uh, proposition is that I think we should wait at least one or two days I think we should we should well, I may, don't know what the SAR professor may may that, but we should think I saw the every parameter is normal in few MI is really very dangerous though it's very easy to diagnose and things but it's really dangerous it, it uh, I don't know, sometimes it's associated with the post AMI, associated right ventricular infection is not visible in the ECG or the, the investigations. But uh, regarding the, the pressure and the uh, heart rate is really very fluctuating and dangerous. So in my practice, I think we should wait. May I add something? May I? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, the sir. question is regarding inferior MI. Now, the inferior MI, if the patient is asymptomatic, the wisest thing is to not to interfere too much. You should give antiplatelet. You should pay more attention to starting. Even ACE inhibitor doesn't have much bearing if the inferior MI is, is smaller, doesn't involve the posterior wall if there is no LV dysfunction. Beta blocker, why should I give it? If the heart rate is already low, why should I make the patient more unstable? Now, if I want, I, I what about the nitrate? And nitrate has symptomatically in inferior MI, we try to avoid a nitrate because if you are quite sure the RV infarction is there, nitrate is contraindicated. If you are not sure, even then, patient if he is not symptomatic, why should you add nitrate? Because it has only, only symptomatic help. Now, one point is that one study has shown nitrate has one intrinsic help. What is that? For collateral development, nitrate is help very interestingly for collateral development for new angiogenesis uh, aspirin uh, is uh, rather uh, create some hem, uh, problem but if you use the nitrate nitric oxide if you give it then the this uh, rather awkward effect of aspirin is cut in. so if in my practice if the patient is symptom free or Pressure is quite all right. If I want to use nitrate, I can use it very short time. Let's say for the healing period, four weeks, more, more than an hour, or for the duration of the hospital stay, if the patient is symptom free, you can uh, stop nitrate, but pay attention to more of the drugs, which are more useful longer term. Dr. So Ajiz is Hokshwell. Dr. Ajiz. Yes, sir. sir, sir. Yeah. Sir. Shunti, what do you mean? Sir, Shunti, what's it, sir? Yeah, Shunti. You mean, what? Hello. Uh, hello, sir, I'm Shunchi. I'm Shunchi. Sir, I have two questions, sir. Sometimes uh, during management, sometimes there is discrepancy between the patient history that is duration of chest pain and ECG change. Because as a patient says, I have chest pain for uh, uh, one day, and there is ST elevation and reciprocal change in ECG. Hello. On who is we depend on? Hello. Uh, yeah. Sir. May I, may I answer it? Sir, next second question. Okay. Hello. Hello, Shunal Chai. Majumda, sir. Sir. Sir, Bolin, sir. Sometimes chest pain and easy chains. Legal question. Chest pain is there for a longer time. Yes, but sir. he has got the ECG changes, right? Yes, sir. What does it, I understand? The yes. thing is that the, he has got the, some pre infarction pre or where there was the chest pain. Then you have to take the history very carefully. The, is there any change of the chest pain? The quality change uh, of the quality of the chest pain. You have to, then you have to measure that that is the point where the infarction takes place. And you have to consider the chest pain is the subjective phenomena and the ECG is the objective. So you have to rely on the more on the ECG findings than on the uh, on the history, because he may have the uh, chronic stable angina for a long time, then it becomes the unstable angina. So the I think the ECG criteria should be taken into consideration for the duration of the migratory infarction. Am I right? Is it clear? Yeah, sir. What is sir? Uh, 
Sometimes patients have unstable angina culminating into acute MI. From history, you may have some guidance. Another thing is reciprocal change is an integral part of acute MI. If you get the reciprocal change, rest assured, if you go for repartition strategy, you are doing well. If the patient has chest pain, Primary PCA is always indicated. That's not a problem. The problem is when you are choosing fibrinolysis. In that case, look out for the cavity in the history. Look out for the reciprocal changes. Look out for the evidence of RD infarction. ST lesion is still present as it is inferior MI. These are the clues that may suggest that you better go for fibrinolysis. You can go for fibrinolysis. You are within the effective time, as it is. Despite the patient's immunity, more than 10 minutes. Dr. Afroja, do you hear me? Yes, uh, Dr. Sorry, yes, I can hear. Yeah, ask your question. Okay. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, sometimes we are, when we are uh, working in a ward and a patient with ST elevation comes, we do thrombolysis and PCI is not always possible. In that case, sir, uh, patient uh, when get stable after five or six days, we discharge the patient and we ask them to come for follow-up and uh, for elective angiogram and uh, PCI if needed. Sir, what will be the time lapse between an acute attack and uh, uh, an elective angiogram and PCI? What is question, sir. Vital question, sir. Apologies, the myocardial infarction. Either primary PCI to salvage the myocardia, and then if it cannot be done, then we have to take time so that the patient becomes stable. And the, then we have to take the whether the, the myocardium is uh, uh, viable or not. This is important to do the angiogram. If the patient is totally asymptomatic, if the patient is not symptomatic, then you do the echocardiogram to have the some idea of the viability of the myocardium. If you think, if you find that the uh, the uh, the site of the myocardium uh, which is affected, if there is the viability is there. Then we have to go to the angiogram and then the deeper field. I think that, that is a, a more rational strategy uh, rather than go, going blindly to do the angiogram and do the PCA of the factor without viability. Right? Uh, sir, thank you, sir. Sir, uh, is there any uh, time limitation, sir? Uh, can we do any time like a patient with acute MI has come? We have treated. If you, if you know, we ask the patient to come after four to six weeks because the healing, we, we give the time period of the healing of the infarct area. That will take around the six weeks. So we, we like to, if the patient remains asymptomatic, then the patient has to come after the six weeks, whether he, he or she will need the angiogram and the uh, revascularization by doing the, the, the those, those tests of the viability. Dr. Tanbir? Do you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, my, uh, my question is, sir, uh, in, in setting up a ST elevation MI, if hemorrhagic stroke occurs, we know there is a contraindication of antiplatelate anticoagulation. When we again start, sir, antiplatelate, what is the hemorrhagic stroke? What is the antiplatelate? The two numbers, sir, question uh, if after 12 hours, we know STK is uh, con uh, contraindication. But why uh, STK is not given after 12 hours? Khaled Mohsin, sir. Khaled Mohsin. Sir. Yeah. Sir. Uh, actually, in case of a hemorrhagic stroke, all forms of antiplatelet and uh, anticoagulants are contraindicated. It's a neurologist's protocol we have to follow. Uh, the neurologist, uh, they do a follow-up scan after 48 hours and they see whether there is any extension of the cerebral hemorrhage or there is sign of resolution. And it is the rule, actually, in case of one month, you should not prescribe any, any type of uh, antiplatelet and anticoagulant in this group of patients. And also evaluate uh, in the patient whether there, you should continue the other drugs uh, in, in, in case, in, 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 including the statins 
the beta blockers and other things and you also look for the whether there is a structural change in the cerebral circulation also whether there is any arteriovenous malformation or there is any uh, aneurysm you have to evaluate uh, for those as well because we have to risk, uh, evaluate the risk of further bleeding in in course of uh, the illness and in, in case of ischemic stroke uh, the treatment is relatively easy because the drugs are common in the coronary artery disease and cerebrovascular disease if there is ischemic stroke there, there is no need to uh, do too much adjustment but in case of uh, hemorrhagic stroke you should be careful about the resumption of uh, antiplatelets and it is uh, better to wait at least one month to restart those group of drugs uh, just one point yes sir. one point ahead yes sir Reminded Sorry. the students that the one history of the cerebral hemorrhage, prasugrel becomes contraindicated for the lifelong. Don't give the prasugrel to those patients who have got the history of the cerebral hemorrhage. Mind. Thank you, Dr. Saleh Faisal. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I have two questions, sir. Why uh, ICD is implanted uh, six weeks after MI? Why it is not before uh, six weeks? And my another question is, sir, what is the difference between a primary PCI and primary PCI strategy? And what is ad hoc PCI? Sir, I, uh, sir, I may have a question, please. Uh, that another question was asked from the previous student there. Uh, why don't we eat uh, thrombolysis after 12 hours? Hello. Sir, there was another question from the student. Why don't we give thrombolysis of the cell Yeah. Nuralam? Dr. Nuralam. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Yes. Why don't As you we, thrombolysis after uh, 12 if we, if we consider the pathophysiology of MI, the ischemia and myocardial cell uh, response to the ischemia, after 12 hours, the cells uh, will, will die, and if uh, the, there is no viable tissue, what, uh, what will be the benefit by uh, opening the vessel if uh, by thrombolysis? So, uh, uh, we, will, we will think risk and benefit. If patients have, uh, sometimes we give the the thrombolytics uh, with the patient having severe chest pain, beyond 12 hours. So always uh, think the clinical scenario, but after 12 hours, if myocardium is damaged already, then uh, benefit is less. That's why this consideration. Thank this, sir. you. Uh, this, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, May sir. Yeah. The thing is, the clot that forms the, uh, the, that's the reason for an MI, it becomes stabilized. The fibrin linking becomes stabilized. A stable thrombus, the thrombolytics cannot act on that. So beyond 12 hours, the action is negligible. It's no uh, good giving it that. Even before 12 hours, after six hours, fibrinolytics actually do not make much uh, effect on the thrombus that is being formed. And that's why six hours, one, Three months to one hour, thrombolysis is almost equivalent result. After three hours, nearly equivalent to primary PCI. After three hours, PCI is always superior. After six hours, fibrinolysis starts losing its effect. After 12 hours, no use. Amra, we can give Dr. it as Wadud, a compensation to note to ourselves, but not. Dr. Wadud, can I add? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir. Dr. Wadud, can I add a few words? Yeah. yeah. Actually, partially denuded thrombus is more dangerous than stable thrombus. Yeah. So if we denude the thrombus with some thrombolytic it thrombosis and may cause clinical deterioration if we use in a stable thrombus. So that's why in an old thrombus, it is better not to use a thrombolytic agent. It will cause more harm than good. Dr. MD Sale Faisal, do you hear yeah, me? Yeah. Yes, sir. And this yeah. why now it is post thrombolysis, and of the addition is advocated. Look at this. 
after telling the place you must give anuxaparin after telling the place remember that and iv anuxaparin you should give initially after telling the place after streptokinase you can add uh, anuxaparin they do some good okay. thank you dr saleh faisal yes sir hello yeah. ask your question uh, please yes sir sir i have questions so why uh, when icd is implanted why it is implanted after 6 weeks of mi why not before 6 weeks of mi and my another question is uh, what is the difference between uh, primary pci and uh, primary pci strategy sir ji sir primary pci strategy and primary pci is for still implanted mi primary pci strategy we are going with the same procedure but the patient do not have still elevation that's the difference same strategy we are following, but in one case, ST elevation is uh, already there, that's why I'm doing. In other case, ST elevation not, but other compelling indication for acute intervention is present. That's why that's the primary PCI strategy. Yes. First, ICD. Why 40 days? Why? The scar that is formed in the myocardium after MI, the healing time here is about four to six weeks. Now, why do I put the uh, the ICD in there to reduce the mortality resulting from fibrillation or VT. Now, when the VTVF occur is related to the LV function. And if the, the after the healing time, the LV function is more than 40%, why should I put an ICD in there? I should rather go for uh, the intervention. I should go for beta blocker. I should go for ACE inhibitor, antiplatelet, starting, not ICD. That's why you should wait. And studies have shown if, if you do the ICD implantation before six weeks too quickly, it produces with the harm because the myocardium has not healed yet. It's unstable. And you are putting a device in there which itself has its own problems. And that may interfere with the healing process and may rather induce some arrhythmias. And mortality rate is increased. That's why we do not put a very expensive device to have some benefit where it is not beneficial if we put it very early on. Next question. Thank, thank you. Dr. Ajar, Ajar Rafi? Yes, sir. Yeah. So do you hear, hear me? Yeah, yeah, nicely heard. So thank you, sir. I would like to thank, as I got the opportunity to ask question, and my question is, we are passing pandemic situation, sir. The patient is Tammy, comes to the emergency, we're getting even some issues has been reported that might have tocotulo, even concomitant uh, myocarditis. Yes, Bangladesh. Now, still now, we have no dedicated cath lab. As we know, the thrombolysis might bring some harm to tocotulo, even concomitant uh, myocarditis. So what will be the strategy for our perspective? And, some, uh, and sir, I would like to um, share some uh, opinion regarding previous two questions, if you allow. Okay, quick, okay. quick answer. Sir, quickly, yeah. Yes, sir. Regarding STEMI, there is a clear cut guideline, sir. If uh, within 48 hours, uh, without testing the viability, even we can go for primary PCI. And after 48 hours, we, we, if we want to do or perform PCI, we need viability. And regarding uh, thrombolysis, sir, if after 12 hours, if the patient is still symptomatic and ongoing chest pain, and if okay. there is dynamic. And if there is oh. dynamic. Okay, okay, time. And if there is dynamic STD changes, sir, in the resource constant environment, even we can go for thrombolysis. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mojumra, sir. Uh, regarding the, uh, what, uh, what was this question? The management of the acute myocardial infarction in the COVID pandemic. Yeah, yeah, thrombolysis. The, the, the question is whether the patient is COVID positive or not. If the patient is not suffering from the COVID uh, infection, then it is as usual, the standard management. If the patient has got the COVID infections, then the, we have to think of the STMI mimickers, rather. That is the COVID infection results in the myocardial injury. It is a new term, the myocardial injury, the rise of the temp, uh, troponin, and there is a changes of the ST segment, and there is also complaints of the chest pain. Then we have to very carefully take the history that whether this chest pain is related to the ischemic or not. This is very important. So you have to have the sort out the patient, whether the patient is uh, have got the ischemic chest pain or he's got the chest pain due to the uh, 
uh, pulmonary embolism or others. Uh, so in the COVID era, uh, with the COVID infection patients having the chest pain with the troponin rise, we have to take the meticulous history and we have to know that the acute myocardial infarction type one is much less than the other causes. The other causes mean that is the Takusobo syndrome or the acute myocardial injury, just myocarditis can give the same picture. Type two. So we have to keep in mind that the non-STMI is more, more frequent than the STMI patient with the COVID infection with the chest pain and ECG changes and troponin type. So, so we have to vigilant. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I was actually uh, wanting to ask the question to the students. Yeah, during this COVID pandemic, what do you mean by uh, uh, STMI mimickers, number one? How do you ensure that you are not actually over-prescribing hypnolytics in this situation? What is the role of oxygen therapy during this uh, COVID situation? What is the role of ECHO? ECHO as an early triage equipment, uh, early triage tool in deciding whether you are going for fibrinolysis or catheter procedure or only uh, the supporting therapy as the patient has myocarditis or acute myocarditis. What is the role of CT scan in case of ac uh, acute SES for patients presenting with you are not sure whether it is uh, COVID positive or not? Thank you, this sir. Thing has to be clear. Question, leaking, leaking out question. I think next July, <laughs> this question is asked frequently asked by the examiners. Uh, Dr. Khairul Kobi Shumon. Yes, sir. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah. we are hearing you. Yeah. Yes, I have sir, two questions. Thanks for permitting me uh, to ask the question. That is, role of lipid lowering agent in loading dose that we traditionally give. Dr. Uh, uh, Mid Jamal, sir, please. Mid Jamal, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, lipid lowering agent in ST elevation myocardial infarction. Usually, uh, we give uh, in loading dose, usually give uh, uh, atrophosphatidin, usually what is here in NICBD. So, what is the role? Uh, is there any, in some books, definitely uh, lipid lowering agent's role is not clearly demonstrated, but also sometimes you are giving. Is, uh, is there any rationality? Uh, the, of course, there is rationality, otherwise, why it should be given? Yeah. Uh, there is plaque stabilization. This is the main important role. Though lipid lowering as and uh, main work is to reduce the lipid, but at the acute setting, how it will reduce the uh, lipid and how it will work. So anti-inflammatory effect as well as the, this is pleiotropic effect. It is called the pleiotropic effect of uh, lipid lowering as and that is uh, anti-inflammatory effect, that plaque stabilization effect, endothelial stabilization effect and these are the effects uh, which we get during I have, elevation market. I have another question that is in sometimes uh, blood pressure is low around 80 50 or uh, much more lower than that even we can have uh, palpate the radial pulse well a patient is not cold clammy then what will be our management strategy and it is we are frequently observing it in CCU. Uh, if you uh, want to tell the patient ST elevation uh, uh, acute myocardial infarction with shock or with hypotension, you will have to first evaluate whether this um, uh, low blood pressure is more than half an hour or with, is there any fissures of shock. If it is the fissures of shock, then you will have to uh, treat that is first one is primary PCI as because in shock thrombolytic therapy uh, benefit is doubtful. But if it is not shock, simple hypotension, you give fluid if possible, and um, you can give thrombolytics in that case. In case of cardiac shock, is there any preference? Who is category of mine? Who should initiate first? Uh, may I add? May yes, I add? Sir. Yes, Vadu. And the thing is that Mid Jamal has very important given the emphasis on that. Is it hypotension or is it cardiogenic shock? For cardiogenic shock, hypotension is only a component. There has to be evidence of tissue hypoperfusion, reduced cardiac output, in case, and the duration is specific. But hypotension, if you go to the books, you will find out that the strategy even in anterior mind is to give fluid. Around 200 or 250 ml normal saline is the uh, uh, fluid of choice. And find out whether the patient is improving or not. And avoid nitrate. Avoid H-inhibitor as you start giving it a, a, a indiscriminately. Don't do that. 
evaluate the patient case by case and go for immediate repartition mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. possible, mm -hmm. primary treatment. If not possible, mm -hmm. fibrinolysis. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have, you, you go for that. But evaluate the patient, repeat it, and go for the uh, lung uh, auscultation. If the lung is dry, you can again add an allocator to it, another 200 ml per hand. Thank you, sir. We have yeah. passed and one hour. One... Only after that, not for that, before that. We have passed one hour 45 minutes. Our last question, Dr. Nahidul Hassan. Mostly, Dr. I just, uh, just a minute. I, I have to, uh, okay. one basic question for the students yeah. that how long we will give oxygen after myocardial infarction? Dr. And Nahid. what is the problems of prolonged oxygen therapy in this group of patients? We, it Nahid. has not been discussed. Dr. Nahid, yes, do you tell the, uh, answer the question? How long you give oxygen if given what is the problem? Actually, in uncomplicated myocardial infarction, the recommendation is to give oxygen for four hours. And only beyond that, if there is patient demonstrates some evidence of hypoxia or pulmonary congestion, yeah. we can prolong the oxygen therapy. And by prolonging oxygen therapy, we are risking the patient uh, regarding the generation of oxygen-derived free radicals, which can injure the myocardium as well as it can cause vasoconstriction leading the afterload and increasing the oxygen consumption of the heart so the oxygen therapy should be very much uh, precise and very much uh, 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 very much judicious after acute myocardial infarction i i like to add just one sentence yes sir following myocardial infarction nowadays if the saturation is more than 90% at least uh, we can tell that there is no class 1 indication for oxygen in acute ST elevation myocardial infarction or acute myocardial infarction. If it is less than 90 in the latest guideline, only then it is essential. Yes. Dr. Sharia, uh, do you add something? Sharia COVID from Dinaspur. Uh, I uh, thank you, Dr. Moshin, for very hot discussion. Uh, I have a sub, I have a some prim sub, sub primary level question to what you said. Yeah. Uh, sir, is there any uh, benefit of one analgesia over another? That is, when we are students, we are taught that morphine, morphine, morphine is the drug. It has got some added benefits other than analgesia. Uh, what is the current situation about them? Number one, morphine, morphine is very effective, central acting, reduces sympathetic activity, induces uh, histamine release from the uh, pulmonary mastocyte, thereby uh, producing papillary dilatation and reduction of pulmonary condition. All these benefits you get from morphine, but it is contraindicated in inferior. In that case, uh, pethidine is the drug of choice. But with pethidine, you do not get all those benefits. That's why it is the best. And number two, morphine the effect of morphine is short lasting. That's another thing. You can give it in a small aliquot, yeah. three milligram, six milligram, and nine milligram, fifteen, mg, uh, twelve milligram. You can go up. That's very helpful. Mojumdar sir, do you add something regarding analgesia? Analgesia, the morphine has also got the venodilation, so it uh, reduces yes, the after uh, preload, preload of the. Yes. This is also important. It causes the preload, uh, as Professor Odu said. It also suppresses the reflexes of the. Uh, pulmonary uh, vasculature so that the patient, when patient becomes hunger of uh, air, yeah, the, the more work, so it also suppresses the, that thing. So morphine works in very different ways. But the only point is that we have to look after the, uh, whether there is any depression of the respiration by counting the respiratory rate. You, you will give the morphine and you have to look at the patient's respiratory rate. This That's was the teaching given by Professor Abu Zafar on the bedside. Yeah. You just yeah. give, give one milligram, one milligram, look at the respiratory rate. When it comes down below the 18, stop. But now it is when the another, another benefit of morphine is it promotes the action of endogenous upwards, like endorphin and encephalin. This has also got a beneficial effect on the patient. But pethidine yeah. has got no such action. We have, we have last question, Dr. Nahidul Hassan. Uh, yeah, yes, sir, most sir. Dr. Nahidul Islam, you are asked any question? Okay, thank you, sir. Salam, sir. 
Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I have several question already discussed uh, that question. Just one question and, for you. Uh, okay. Uh, in uh, in uh, we got many patients with MI with cardiogenic shock, but uh, after uh, patient improving cardiogenic shock, we have to start the uh, prevent secondary preventary drug. And uh, in that case, uh, how will we start the beta blocker as inhibitor after improving cardiogenic shock? Regarding beta blocker after cardiogenic shock, uh, it has been told that beta SC inhibitor beta blocker should be given provided the blood pressure permits. Whenever your blood pressure is more than 90, then you can start with vasodilatory beta blocker. And then gradually you can, with very minimum dose, uh, preferably uh, uh, vasodilatory beta blocker, and gradually you will increase when the pressure permits. Thank you, sir. So we, we have already passed around oh. two hours. Yes. So uh, we have started IPDI. Me and uh, Professor Wadu sir and Arif started uh, small, just uh, we are just so a small if you me, but, I have an yeah. issue. Yeah, uh, Yeah. Uh, I want to uh, highlight on uh, two issues. On uh, on our fellow asked that uh, regarding CKD and statin therapy. Yeah. Uh, ESC published uh, this epidemia guideline uh, just last year, 2019. There they did not mention any dose reduction of the CKD patient of statin having ischemic heart disease unless there is an endoskeletal renal disease because. Most of the CKD patients died from the cardiovascular cause. So they didn't yeah. mention uh, regarding the reduction of the statin dose. And second issue I, I would like to mention that not discussed, I think, but frequently asked, uh, uh, ischemia, am I with ischemic stroke? Major Master showed nicely that continuation of thrombolysis of ischemic strokes, six months. But uh, one point is there, three hours we, we have learned uh, previously. If within three hours, a stroke, ischemic stroke is defined, uh, happen and already MI, uh, STMI, then fibrinolysis could be given. But, uh, uh, but in six months, it is contraindicated thromboly uh, thrombolysis. Ischemic three, stroke and STMI. Three hours only TPA, no, no other. Only TPA, only TPA. 4.5 hours. Yeah. 4.5 hours. Uh, now it thank, is thank you. Thank you, Nuralom. You raised a nice question. So we are uh, running short of time. A few comments from the Bojum sir regarding our program. We will see lots of students from Malaysia, also India, we attend here. There are a few comments, Bojum uh, sir, uh, regarding our program for the students. Sir? Sir, with the EMS. Sir, Mirja sir, please, few comments, sir. For the students regarding exam, so some questions, some some examiner asks regarding exam. They, they, they uh, yesterday they asked few questions. They now is COVID situation. Their duty on the in the COVID hospital. They also in the quarantine. So July session is examiner will held or not? Regarding uh, regarding students, Professor was it also know it. Uh, regarding the exam, uh, uh, most of you have uh, known it that. Uh, FCBS in uh, July session has been uh, postponed. I have uh, obtained this letter. But in case of our MD diploma cardiology, uh, till now there is no such decision. They are rather, the university has sent me to uh, for question. <laughs> and uh, for phase A, should be examination should be completed by 10th uh, June. Uh, and the examination system has been changed, only the written and uh, OSPI. So uh, probably examination will occur uh, even not timely, but in the uh, same um, uh, course curriculum, that is within uh, this session. Probably within this session it will be uh, occur, but I do not know exact date, whether it may be uh, shifted a few days, but no, we do not know till now uh, which, on which date exam will occur. So for examinees, it is advisable to continue their duty, uh, continues their war, uh, study so that when examination comes, then they can 
uh, approach. And I, that have, is I have appeals to you, sir. Lecture. You are taking this lecture in our institute. We are taking lectures. Yes, we are uh, trying to update them, however, as far as possible. And I am very much happy to see that Professor Mozumdar sir is my teacher. He is still with us, and that is why my stamina has become double. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I have appeal to Director N S V D sir. I have appeal to Director N S V D sir for the, from the students. Is it possible to continue exam uh, on the July, sir? Uh, that this decision because. Uh, some of the students are working in the covid hospital they are they are in the hotel they have no book the book they are uh, how they uh, appear in the exam sir now we have given the information to the university um, yeah uh, university chairman was appointed and he gave me uh, rather some uh, good news that exam may be in different way we can't tell it now but exam may be in different way in a uh say for easy Simpi, way sympathetic, but sympathetic uh, way sympathetic uh, way empathetic uh, way <laughs> thank you sir thank you sir mr amdar sir sir kichu comment sir ami ki comment korbo you see the lots of students from the malaysia uh, students from the malaysia also india today from the india also uh, like, they are attend this it is program. my great uh, it is my great pleasure and privilege to again to remain with these students for a long time i always love my students and i always love my teaching so it gives me opportunity your your endeavor gives me the opportunity to be associated with these students again so thank you very much you the organizers professor mostin and others and i will be happy to remain with you uh, for the future also thank you very much thank you sir sir wadu sir our post director professor wadu sir is there sir namaste it's really uh, Very hard training, and our enthusiasm of the students, also from our teachers, our senior teachers, our colleagues, and all of them are embracing this new form of uh, education. Class, class. In this situation, when we are both uh, mentally quite crushed, quite uh, burdened with uncertainty, with anxiety, and with everything, and also we are missing. the face time uh, face to face con uh, contact with each other this type of uh, education program actually can boost our morale can also boost our knowledge and also prepare us for the exam and for the students if you come to know many of the many of our pet questions many of our uh, inherent tendencies what we want to know from you during the exam time let's say Uh, in at a one shot you are getting the question pattern of many examiners this is the great opportunity please use this use this to your extent and always be prepared don't try to shy away from the fact that you have to face the exam that's not going to go away we may be empathetic we may be sympathetic but you have to be prepared for it don't say that they will be a mercy pass for everybody no that won't be we will we'll be there for you but you have to go there by yourself stay well stay safe stay prepared and thank you everybody thank you we are delighted our director sir mijamal sir with us our, our every student are happy with him and professor abdul al sharif mundar the senior teacher in bangladesh also there our faculties khalid mohsin sir nur alam abdul al shariar khandak asaduz zaman vijay datto and uh, Uh, i think uh, kobir kumar dash from chitagang they are coming as hariya kobir from dinaspur thank you all i also thank incepta from agul sorcerers from incepta mr bijanu rahman and his team saidur uh uh huh? shaurab adnan afsar and ryan they are doing a lot to organize this program and one of my soldier dr arif rahman sajol doing a lot thank you all stay safe be cared care yourself thank you Assalamu alaikum Allah Hafiz thank you Meet Jamal bhai salam and many thanks don't cut this thank you sir Eid Mubarak sir aajke last class idher aage sir idher pore class hobe 30 tarikh last class 30th may hi luthuraman sir luthuraman sir valvular disease mitral stenosis pore sir valvular disease sir uni pore mitral disease sir mitral stenosis porabe sir okay thank you sir Meet Jamal sir pore class sir এই পরে একটা ক্লাস হবে স্যার थैंक यू স্যার
for this sir nuralam thank you thank you sharyar thank you all